tell us about the study that says there are no safe animal products. So bottom line is, according to the Nurses' Health Study and uh, Health Professional Follow-Up, uh, as published in uh, 2016 in the Journal of American Medical Association, if you have a cardiovascular risk factor, there are no safe animal products for your consumption. Who's making the dietary recommendations for the United States, and are they doing what's best for us in the industry? Uh, well, uh, I, the, this is a, an, it's an interesting process that every five years, uh, first of all, I should applaud the every five years. That is, enough happens in the nutrition area and in the science realm that pretty much everything that was from five years ago ought to be rethought. And so it does make sense to go back and look at things. The U.S. Department of Agriculture and Health and Human Services actually get together and they sort of alternate who takes the lead. Uh, but every five years, a new set of dietary recommendations are made. Uh, it's a nomination process and the selection process, I'm not exactly sure. I know I've been nominated before. I'm, you know, whether I get selected at some point, I don't know. But um, the, they try to put together experts. Um, you know, my limitation as an expert is that I'm really not much of a foodie. All I know is what you shouldn't eat to have heart disease death. That's what I have studied tremendously, <laughs> a tremendous amount of. Uh, the rest of it, uh, and if they want that kind of input on the committee, <laughs> I can summarize that literature really well. Um, but there will be people who are nutritionists, dietitians, um, you know, physicians, you know, people who are, are really into uh, many, every aspect, hopefully, of nutrition. Where the problems have been uh, is there's, with any guideline committee, uh, there's always the specter of conflict of interest. Um, and uh, financial motivation. And I would say that's one of the reasons that the American College of Cardiology and American Heart Association, we have gone a long way for our prevention guidelines to ensure that we don't have anything like that. And we ask, doesn't, it hasn't been perfect, okay, well, who is? But um, we have asked anyone who's involved in our prevention guidelines to have no relationships with industry or conflicts of interest financially 12 months before the deliberations start, throughout the deliberations, all the way through publication, and then 12 months after. Okay? That's a high bar. Um, that bar has not been reached by uh, the government uh, folks so far, and, uh, but we're hoping that we will. Now people will argue the other side and say, no conflict, no interest. <laughs> okay? and, I can understand that. That is, the people who are experts are usually working in the field, and sometimes they're working with an industry partner who has something to gain um, by a recommendation. Uh, but if you have, uh, for ex one concrete example, was the concern about cholesterol, uh, about egg consumption. Um, if you're going to make a recommendation on that, it probably shouldn't have uh, people who are affiliated with the egg board making that recommendation because how, how can it be objective? Um, and this is, but this is, a, this is an issue. How do you get the expertise uh, on eggs without talking to the egg board? And so, and can you look, can you trust what's in the literature? Uh, is the literature funded by commercial entities? And uh, it's always in the fine print, but, um, but not all of the relationships with industries are disclosed. Uh, I know that this was a big deal in, you know, over here on the East Coast with uh, institutions having investigators who were not disclosing their relationships with industry and um, it coming out after the fact and do you take those articles out of the literature? Well, uh, this is something that we all have to own up to and we have to be upfront and transparent about our relationships with industry and when it comes to food, just be, you know, very open about, you know, I'm representing the cattleman's industry and I think, you know, red meat can be healthy if you don't process it or whatever. I mean, make your statement and, and say what your uh, conflict of interest is and that 
uh, might be uh, a better process. So hopefully we will get um, uh, for 2020, uh, we'll have a new guideline uh, committee and hopefully there'll be more emphasis on the kinds of studies that we've known in the last five years, uh, particularly uh, about you know, health and nutrition from large observational um, prospective cohorts and that kind of protective nutrition research will actually get into the guidelines, I hope.